All right, I think we're ready to get started. Today is Tuesday, September 29th, 2015, and this is the 2015 CFTA Business Partner Solution Showcase. I'm Scott Friend, and I would like to thank all of our attendees for joining us today. Today's webinar is being recorded. Both the recording and the slides will be made available on the CFTA's website. This presentation is estimated to run 25 minutes with the remaining time dedicated for questions and answers. Feel free to send any questions using the questions dialog box either during the presentation to add it to the queue or to save it for the end. I would like to extend a special thank you to today's presenter, Kumar Veratanga. Kumar serves as the Director of Technology for ARC Document Solutions. His presentation is on Corporate VP Archiving and Information Management. Kumar, thank you so much for being here today, and I'll turn it over to you. The, uh, uh, the focus of uh, our talk today is uh, when you have an architectural firm or a design firm, uh, what are they looking at? This is from a, a NIRMA standard that is the uh, Nuclear Information and Records Management Association standard. It applies in general, really, uh, and that's why uh, I chose to discuss it. Uh, so when you have a design firm looking at what really needs to be designed, they're talking about what needs to be there. Okay, And when it gets into construction and the physical plant, uh, you're talking about what is actually there on prem, right? What is actually built out and uh, as built documents, let's say. And when it comes to facility configuration and what is actually delivered as part of a uh, set of deliverables, either from the architect or the contractor to facilities group, um, the facilities group looks at it and says, you know, this is what we say is there. Uh, is it congruent? Is it always the same? Uh, it is not. In many instances, when we have uh, interacted with the um, IFMA, for example, the International Facilities Managers Association, uh, what we hear is that often the information that's migrated over from a design build process to facilities is inconsistent from virtually day one. Right? So, there needs to be a process where there is some method, a system, uh, to maintain equilibrium between the three. Because it doesn't remain static. There's always changes and improvements, adaptations to existing uh, uh, facility that requires a recycle, right? This process repeats itself, goes back to design for simple TIs or other things, and uh, the continuous update and uh, maintenance of that data is crucial uh, to manage and, and maintain a facility and to make that operationally efficient. So the question I always ask is, you know what, are you working at the speed of paper? Right? Is that the speed at which the organization works, uh, either uh, in part or in whole? Right? And typically it might be a hybrid where parts of the organization are electronic and able to handle visual media and work in that space throughout, um, and others are not, right? Or in many cases, files that are born digital end up in paper numerous times, not just once at the end of the project when it comes to an archive, let's say, uh, for document retention policies and things of that nature, but more importantly, throughout the process, it's going out to paper and why is that? How can we eliminate that? Um, so the typical use case that we find is, right, so it can be a hybrid of uh, this type of uh, paper documentation and visual documentation. Uh, but at the end of the day, the objective should be this, right? We should be all be able to uh, pinch, swipe, and, and, <laughs> and uh, tap our way through a uh, document collection. And having mobile access, having cloud-based access really uh, is achievable and uh, successfully delivered in many, many instances, regardless of how unstructured the content is at the beginning. Uh, and that unstructured content can be both, as, as we discussed, paper and, and digital content. And uh, so this is our platform, but it can be any platform. At the end of the day, having the ability to manage this information meaningfully 
in a central repository. You have a single source of truth, so you have the ability to capture this content, manage it, search for it, and uh, use it as and when needed. And more importantly, to be able to search for this information, right? Being able to extract data from the title blocks of uh, design and engineering documents, let's say, so that they're meaningfully found. I like to use the word findability as opposed to search, because find to me means I'm able to locate the specific document I need, not get a range of documents and then spend more time looking for it, even if it's uh, in an electronic environment. And second is uh, specs, O&M documents, things of that nature, maintenance logs and records, um, pre uh, preventive maintenance, all these types of documentation. Um, can be available uh, on a mobile device and simple uh, access to it provided with the Google-like search experience, ultimately uh, uh, accelerating access to information. So typically, um, when we uh, discuss these these uh, concerns and issues, there are a number of things that come up. You know, hey, we have lots of storage. Uh, uh, that's in paper, in a warehouse or basement. We have lots of uh, data and digital content, uh, but basically it's on a network share drive and there's lots of duplication and replication involved in that data because it's unstructured for all practical purposes. Or we've managed this content and we are without ever classifying it, right? Uh, and without classification, there's no meaningful use of it or or management of that content. And uh, all, uh, there's no visibility to the content. We don't know exactly what's there, or and if we don't know what's there, we certainly can't locate it. So usually what happens is um, uh, the, 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 uh, it's an ad hoc process, right, with the organization, and trying to manage through that. And, uh, but when, uh, the information management space is not addressed in a cohesive way. Uh, lots of benefits are lost because there are lots of hidden costs uh, in this process that are not always evident, uh, and we see that all the time. And um, uh, there are a number of factors that go into uh, those hidden costs. And usually, it's not a lack of organization; but it's just that there's no means and method to achieve the goal. Right. So the goal should be to really identify what those means and methods are. Certainly there needs to be a process to capture. Getting documents into the system, whether it be electronic or paper or film, whatever it might be, uh, into the system. Being able to store it, right? Being able to manage it securely and having the infrastructure to uh, protect that intellectual property. And typically, uh, going to the cloud, uh, we use Amazon's virtual private cloud. It has um, a lot of mechanisms and processes built in, and, but it's up to the provider to leverage all that. And that's what we've done in, in uh, managing and storing documents in a very secure way. We have information from companies that do nuclear facilities and nuclear submarines to uh, uh, buildings and property. Right? So it runs the gamut. Being able to manage that, organize and index this information. We talked about it earlier. Being able to find the information when you want, how it's organized and classified, should be customizable to your own experience. It shouldn't be, uh, you know, kind of one size fits all, but rather something that addresses your unique requirements. And more importantly, have some means and method to destroy the documents if they need to be destroyed. Some retention policy to mitigate risk so you're not keeping documents too long, uh, nor disposing of them too early. All right? uh, we talked about access, and more importantly, access to both internal and external users, uh, because one repository uh, can be shared among those who are participating on a project. So for example, it's a full life cycle, is how uh, we'd look to think, ab think about it, because once these documents are in archive and there's a new project or a new renovation, things of that nature, uh, they can be used as a base drawing and the same platform used to facilitate 
that design and construction and archiving process back into a operations uh, and facilities group. So you own the content throughout the process, whether it be uh, for maintenance or for uh, design and construction, uh, and ultimately being able to consume that content, right? Uh, whether it be electronic or paper, it doesn't really matter, but ultimately being able to consume it uh, and have actionable steps available to you once those con that content is available. So ultimately, the goal is to manage paper and electronic in a single business process, right? Um, and I'm sure you're all aware of uh, a number of the document traps that come come into play when you don't have a single source of truth, right? You may have data silos where the information is residing in a multiple locations or it's in paper and digital. But whatever it might be, there are lots of costs associated with it. Uh, simple uh, cost of uh, retrieval and storage, you know, Gartner and others have uh, done studies where they, they note that up to 60 minutes per day per employee is spent on simple document search, retrieval, and access type of related activity when in today's environment, um, the experience should be a matter of seconds in order to find the information that's required. Um, uh, there's no retention policy. There's uh, uh, no ability to uh, deal with audits or compliance requests, right? Because it's not in a managed environment. And if it's in a managed environment, the ability to access the appropriate information in compliance with the retention policy is very much available. Um, and at the end of the day, a digital infrastructure, right? If it's on the cloud, uh, that infrastructure cost is diminished greatly. There's no requirement for acquiring IT spend on, on hardware and, and software to maintain it, uh, buying stands and things of that nature, when it's provisioned on demand, right? On demand availability and, and always available. So I think we talked about a number of these things. It's really about uh, getting access to this content on the cloud, and and how we make it happen is, I think, um, uh, the most important step because often when you have to scan, you have to rename, you have to add file attributes, you have to get the information to the platform, you have to have a customized platform to meet your requirements, you have to have somebody train and deploy, uh, provide a perpetual visual storage. Um, all kinds of components are uh, come into uh, play uh, in terms of taking unstructured content and providing a structured environment that's meaningful uh, for the long term. So it fits your uh, work environment. So when you look at that, um, you must look at all the components that go into assuring that a a document, right? Uh, let's say a paper document that you have in in uh, uh, in your storage or in your file cabinets has the ability to end up on the cloud with the uh, uh, with the assurance that there's a process that somebody is using to assure that it does happen, right? There's a means and method to track this document from inception all the way to the cloud, right? So how is that done? Uh, you know, it can be done using uh, advanced barcode technology, advanced data extraction um, uh, methodology. All those things are in place depending on the type of document collection that you have and whether it's a hybrid or whether it's all paper, all those components come into play so that at the end of the day you have a successful project outcome. I think that's really key. Certainly, second is uh, being able to index and, and extract the information from the content. And that extraction can come from the paper, certainly, you know, from the title block of, of large format documents, engineering documents, or from uh, small format spec books and O&M documents and things of that nature. 
uh, either extracted from the content or extracted in terms of attributes associated or tags associated with each of those documents so that can be searched in combination with the, with the Google-like text-based search or the attribute search. So there's a combination of grant search algorithms that can be put into play, uh, but that is dictated by your user experience. What you want to do, how you want to accomplish that will dictate how this information is indexed and uploaded to the cloud. And also part of that is when you're dealing with legacy documentation, uh, there's inconsistency in how things, how documents were named or how facilities were named perhaps, right? Names change over a period of time. Uh, I'll give you a case in point. Uh, uh, we did a project for uh, a uh, client, San Francisco Unified School District. And um, uh, they had uh, school uh, schools and facilities, let's say uh, Abraham Lincoln Middle School. Uh, Abraham Lincoln Middle School was called that by uh, one party at some point in, in the last few decades. And somebody else called it by the acronym, others called it Lincoln Middle School, and on and on. Right? But at the end of the day, when we provide search, we want to be able to search for the common term that's used today by the knowledge worker today, let's say it's Lincoln High School, and be able to retrieve all the other documentation regardless of how it was referred to in the past. So that's data normalization verification process that is crucial in making the data reliable. You know, the analogy I think is if I if I search for the nearest Starbucks DME and I know it's only five minutes away, but Google tells me it's 20 minutes away, I'm going to toss this phone away, right? Unreliable. That the same veracity of information and the, the, the meticulous process that must be followed in order to ensure that your data is as reliable as it is uh, uh, as it should be on the cloud. Uh, and certainly, lastly, it's migration, being able to uh, have it available anytime, anywhere, any device, all that good stuff comes by virtue of doing uh, the first steps right. So there's an extensive workflow process, we have like a 20-step process that goes through to ensure that that happens. But for the sake of our discussion today, I just want to give you an overview. And so my a counsel to you is, you know, uh, looking at the goal of a successful project outcome, seek turnkey providers, right? Those who are able to customize and integrate your workflows, uh, those who can handle paper and document conversion, right, electronic conversion, so can the data extraction happen uh, even with the digital content? Absolutely. Can data be deduped and processes followed to ensure that um, a single version of every document is uh, is residing on the cloud? Absolutely. Uh, so all those processes are there. And um, that there's a migration, right? Uh, and that's verifiable and proven. And at the end of the day, offers the Day Forward program. The Day Forward program is really designed to keep you paperless, keep you in a perpetual digital workflow and not, not return uh, back to uh, using a hybrid or paper uh, in, in any form. And the, uh, the process itself is closely defined. The Day Forward program can be a self-managed program where you're doing that using your own equipment and staff, or it can be an outsourced program uh, but ultimately, then, uh, end product is that uh, a digital uh, workflow on the cloud. And so I'll close. I think uh, we're close to our time. Uh, I'll close by, you know, just a quote by Gartner. that uh, simply states, after investing strategically the content management, in content management, enterprises usually can save at least half of the time and money now spent on non-automated document management, right? And certainly uh, we have seen 
that proven over and over again because it's not simply taking a document and putting it on the cloud, taking a piece of paper and putting it on the cloud. To, from my perspective, the paper is simply a symptom of the problem, but not the problem. Right? The problem really is addressing the information management uh, issue. How staff and, and and users are interacting with this content, why they need to interact, how they interact, and how we can present the solution that is improving uh, their experience in managing and using the, that information. So automation comes into play, and automation can go much further in terms of business process automation once you are on the cloud. Uh, I think getting to that first step is key. Uh, so with that, Scott, I'll, I'll close. I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone may have. All right, if anybody has any questions, you can go ahead and uh, ask them in the questions area or post them up, and we'll see. So far, no questions. All right, well, not seeing any questions, so um, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, wrap this webinar up. I'd like to thank uh, all of you who attended today, uh, who joined us. Uh, the next webinar in the CFTA Business Partner Solution Showcase is scheduled for um, uh, 1 p.m. on October 6, uh, 2015, and the presenter will be Colin Hodson uh, with Open Spatial. Uh, Colin will be presenting on going from uh, CAD to GIS, the Open Spatial Solution. Um, for more information on future webinars in the series, uh, visit CFTA, the CFTA website at www.cfta.org. And again, I would like to thank uh, Kumar for his presentation today. Um, and and thank um, our document solutions, um, and that wraps up our our webinar for today. Thank you. Bye. Great. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for the privilege of uh, addressing your group. And thank you. All right. Have a good day, everybody.